Before I read the scripture lesson, would you uh, join me in prayer? Lord, it's not by might, it's not by power, uh, and it's not just by cleverness of human imagination that your word is read and proclaimed, but it is by the Holy Spirit. So may that spirit come now. May it rest upon each of us, may it work through all of us to bring us the living word that is Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I read today from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. It was a uh, hot summer day in Kincaid, West Virginia. I had let the grass grow a little too high and needed to use a weed eater on, on a bank. I'm clearing that bank off with the, with the, uh, with the weed eater, gas powered, just knocking those weeds out, uh, knocking them down. And then all of a sudden, the weed eater stopped spinning. Uh, I thought maybe it was out of gas, check that, no wasn't that, I started looking and the weeds had wrapped itself up around the head of the weed eater. Well, I went in and got some tools. I didn't have very many tools. I was 24, 25 at the time. Um, I just got what I had, but I figured I could, you know, took a screwdriver, popped the top off the bottom of the head, and then uh, I saw that there was a nut there that held everything together so that I could get all the weeds that had got tangled up behind it out. Well, I tried, um, I tried a, a box in wrench first. And I twist, turned and turned and couldn't get that bolt to move. Uh, I, I, I tried pliers, which is probably a stupid idea come to think of it. I even got out a pair of vice grips and, and uh, started jumping up and down on them, trying to get that thing to move. And then I just took the whole weed eater, threw it over into the, the bank I had been working on it, and just stomped off. Now my neighbor across the street had been watching this kind of develop and, and uh, he came over and, and he said, uh, you having trouble there, uh, preacher? And I said, yeah, the weeds are all tangled up in there. I guess it's got it so messed up, I can't get this bolt loose. And he looked at it for a minute and he says, well, uh, this should be pretty easy. Let me see that box in. He took the box in and he turned it. And I mean, he didn't, he, he didn't use much muscle at all. Just turned that, and it was coming out. And I said, what'd you do? Did, did my throw loosen it up? He kind of laughed. He said, no. He says, uh, I think you've been working on this the wrong way. He says, you see, this here is a, a reverse threaded uh, screw, reverse threaded bolt. Reverse threaded bolt. Never heard of that up till that point. You know, I'd spent my whole life you know, to that point hearing righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, you know. But here was a reverse threaded bolt, and I had to go the opposite direction, but I didn't know that. So I couldn't get it off. I couldn't get that bolt loose. But someone who knew that rule just very easily took it off. I mention this because in, in hearing this lesson uh, that Jesus gives us, on the mountain with the disciples. There's, there's a lot taking place. I mean, there's the fact that uh, the disciples are gathered there because Jesus told them to be there. And that even when they saw him, some of them doubted while others worshipped. Then Jesus tells them to go into all the world baptizing in, their, in his name and teaching all the commandments that he gave. And that he would be with them wherever they went to the end of that age. That's a lot if you think about it. 
I mean, there's this idea of worshiping the resurrected Savior. There's the, uh, the idea of Jesus being with us all the time. And there's also that idea that Jesus commanded the disciples to baptize in his name. You know, just earlier we had a, a baptism in this service. And um, I couldn't help but draw the connection between this passage and, and what took place there. Because, you know, oftentimes when we hear that passage of Jesus saying, go and baptize in my name, we take it quite literally, thinking that that is the only thing we need to do, is, is, is get people to be baptized. But that word, baptism, it, it's, it's a big word. It means to be immersed. And in some ways, Jesus was telling us to immerse people in his name. Now think about that for a little bit. Being immersed, or everyone around us being immersed in Jesus' name. What exactly would that require? Well, today, it's going to require just a little trip, okay? Uh, you, come on, follow me, if you don't mind. Uh, we're just going to take a little journey here. Um, I, I know this is unusual. I know this is kind of uh, not the way you're used to doing things on Sunday, but, hey, you're sitting in your living room or somewhere, and, and you know, here we are. Uh, you might as well do everything a little different. Come on, that was the, the front of the church. We're headed over here into the into the office area. Um, I don't know how many people have actually seen the pastor's office here. And uh, well, I should apologize for the mess, but you know that's just the way it is. I'm not the neatest person in the world, so my office kind of reflects that. Uh, my my film crew wanted me to take down some of the papers on the wall beforehand. Uh, saying, you know, it might look a little bit better. But I didn't want it to look any better because sometimes work is a little messy. You might think that, uh, you know, working in a church, you don't have things that, like you deal with and work in other places. But I'll tell you, church work has just as much conflict, just as much energy draining, just as much mess as anywhere. But it's still one of the things I try to remember when, whenever I'm working is that um, part of what I'm to do here is to immerse all those around me in Jesus. That means remembering that I've been baptized and remembering that uh, I can spread the peace of Jesus with me because he said, I'll be with you wherever you go. Uh, we're not done with our journeying yet, but uh, I tell you what, for the next leg of the journey, uh, I'll let you join me on that. I'm, I'm going to stop. Right? Hey, I'm back. <laughs> I know that was quick. Quick move from the office to my vehicle. But, um, that's another place we are a lot of the time. And just so you know, I'm buckled up here, and I have the camera being operated by someone else entirely. I'm just going to ask them to say hi. Hi. Okay, so... You, so that you know, it's it's not me doing this. And all I'm going to be doing is talking while I'm driving, which as far as I know, isn't against the law. But you know, it's, it, it's amazing. We spend a lot of time um, in our vehicles, in our uh, life, uh, whether it's commuting to work or, or going to a restaurant or going to get groceries. Um, there's a lot of times that we're in these these vehicles uh, and yet that's a, a perfect time for us to be immersing people in Jesus you know I've I've had more than my share of times where um, traffic has gotten on my nerves or the driving of somebody else has has gotten on my nerves uh, it's those times that We've got to be especially careful about carrying the name of Jesus with us. And so, you know, when you're driving, think about it. Just, just think about it. 
that Jesus commanded you to go everywhere in the world and immerse people in his name. All right, hang on. We'll, we'll catch back up with you. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> I didn't think you needed to see me drive all the way across town. I'm back on Southside now, or what I would say back on Southside, because that's uh, where I'm headed next. Um, I'll show you a place some of you may know, or some, some people may not know. But uh, if you just kind of look out the window here behind me, that little red and white house there, that's that's the place where your your senior pastor lives. It's known as a parsonage, uh, but it's uh, the place your senior pastor has lived for years. <laughs> Someone got a little upset with me there. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, we'll just pull in the driveway here, and uh, you give us a second to just kind of get out of the car and, and move up on. Okay, we're here at the house. Um, I don't want to go in right now. Uh, it's, it's suffering from uh, just a little bit too much of my presence, I guess. Uh, but you know, our homes are another place where we should be thinking about those words of Jesus, especially about uh, immersing people in Jesus' name. Uh, a lot of things happen in our homes. Changes take place, both good and not good. Um, we go through so much in our homes um, that this, this should be a place that uh, Jesus just kind of fills the place. I know you're, you're in your home probably right now watching this, so my prayer is that you know that you have all you need to baptize, literally, but to immerse that place in Jesus. Okay. For justice, for racial justice, we gather together to pray for healing, for peace. We gather as uh, fellow citizens, uh, citizens of faith, to commit to do our part in making our community, our country, and our world more of what God would have it be. Uh, this is uh, sponsored by our downtown clergy uh, association, ministerial association. So we have uh, multiple uh, churches from within the Christian tradition as a part of this association. This is not only an ecumenical association, but it is also an interfaith association. So we are delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Cotter from the Muslim Association Center, and then uh, Rabbi Bob, who is new in town since April, I understand. So moved into town uh, in the middle of the pandemic. So this will be uh, a, an interfaith service or time of prayer where each of us uh, pray from within our own tradition. We unite as a community in the common call, love for God and love for neighbor. Hey everybody, uh, it's uh, it's pretty hot out here, um, but I want to uh, tell you that I appreciate you coming out. Those who are joining us online, um, thank you guys for coming out. Um, it's only through the unity that we can um, stand together and, and make a change. Um, let, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Blessed Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. But Lord, in this time of mourning for our nation, Lord, we just ask that you walk with us. That you be a light into our feet and a lamp into our path. Lord, we need you now more than ever. Lord, we just ask that you comfort those who are hurting. That you fix um, those who, who need to be fixed, Lord. That you would um, reconcile everybody back to you. But Lord, in your word, you tell us that you reconcile us to you, but we need to be reconciled to each other. And Lord, we just ask that we become agents of that reconciliation, that we take time to listen to each other's stories, that we listen with compassion, that we listen with uh, empathy, Lord, that we can hear the heart of those who are hurting. But we just ask that you just bring us together in a unity never seen before. Lord, we pray for this city. We pray for Huntington. Lord, we pray for this state. We pray for this nation. Pray for the world as we cry out to you, Father. We ask that you be with us as we're hurting. Lord, when one member of our community is hurting, we all hurt. We ask that you be with us 
Did you give us eyes to see a new vision, a clearer vision of what the kingdom here on earth could be like? Allow us to step into your love, not overshadowed by hate, not overshadowed by bigotry, yes. but that we have enough power to stand where we need to stand, that we can stand together with you at the head. It's in your name that we pray these things. Amen. All right. Just leaving the prayer gathering that was held uh, across the street from our congregation or our building yesterday. Um, I saw a lot of you there and that's good, but it's a reminder to us that one of the one of the main ways that we can pour out the presence or immerse people in the presence of Jesus um, is through our relationships, uh, through the way that we, we think about our own relationship to Jesus and our relationship to others. Um, the past couple weeks have been incredible. Um, when you think about the the things that have happened in our nation and um, the pain that has been felt by so many. Um, to me, it's a lot like Jesus crying out on that cross. Uh, the pain and, and suffering of our, our brown and black brothers and sisters. Folks, it's, it, it's time for us as a congregation to, to start saying Black Lives Matter. It's time for us to, to realize that our baptism into Jesus calls us to so much more than just looking out for ourselves, just worrying about salvation of ourselves when there is so much more going on around us. Jesus told us to go into all the world, baptizing in his name. And we don't need to worry about that either because he promised to be with us even to the end of this age. And we're back. Well, almost back to where we started. I think I actually started over here. Um, I know that that was unusual. It's different. These are unusual in different times we live in. The one thing that we can count on in the midst of that, though, is that we have all we need uh, to baptize around us in the name of Jesus. We have all we need, the very presence of Jesus that is promised to us in our own baptisms and in the Word of God. We have all we need. So my brothers and sisters, go. Go and baptize in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>